Well, hello there, everyone, and thank you very, very much for joining me on yet another whiskey review. It is your whiskey coach back. It is the month of October, and the sweet smell of bourbon fills the air. Today's review is Angel's Envy. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey finished in port wine barrels. Now, this review is actually a, um, um, a request by a viewer named Sam Mabe, maybe, Maba. Not sure how to pronounce your name. Sorry, Sam. But this one's for you. He requested I uh, review this, and I was having trouble figuring out which uh, bourbon to review to start off October, and uh, that was a that was a good uh, good source of inspiration. So thank you, Sam. Uh, today's bourbon is an interesting one. Why do I say that's an interesting one? Because it's a little unique in its process and its dis distillation. We all know traditional bourbon and how it's produced and what constitutes a bourbon. If you're not sure, check uh, several reviews ago. I think it's a Bourbon 101 where I talk about the fact that it has to be 51% corn, has to be American distilled, has to be new char charred oak barrels, etc., etc. But this one's a bit different because of the fact that it is uh, aged additionally in port wine barrels. Now, I am not a wine drinker, I'll be the first to admit. However, I do know about a port wine. Uh, it's sweet. It's a very sweet wine, so I'm interested to see how this, um, this bourbon is influenced or affected by that sweetness. We'll soon, uh, soon find out. This bourbon, from my understanding, is the brainchild of a gentleman by the name of Lincoln Henderson. Lincoln, actually, if I'm not mistaken, was the former master distiller or master blender of Woodford Reserve, which is, if you know anything about bourbon, a very, very highly thought of uh, organization. And um, to me, that gives it some instant credibility. Um, the name, let's talk about the name, Angel's Envy. That is cool. That is cool. You know me, I'm a big believer in marketing and packaging. And that just says uh, there's some creativity there. We all know what Angel Share is. It's the the amount of spirit that's lost in the condensation and the expansion and the contraction of the wood and uh, it's evaporation basically of, of liquor and we call that the angel share well they decided this stuff was so good that they were going to name it the angels envy because angels should be uh, envious of how good this uh, this bourbon was so i think that's really cool uh the bottle itself uh i think is also a really nice uh nice little piece of art i kind of like the shape it's kind of the shape of a of a back or a, the back of an angel, basically. You know, it's kind of, you know, kind of that hourglass shape. And if you see right there, you can see the wings on the back of that bottle, which is really cool. And then right there on the top of the bottle, it even says, from the cellars of Lincoln Henderson. And it's uh, got his little, uh, you know, fake, fake signature there. It also, uh, it also does have a batch number. And a bottle number. So this is batch 13D, bottle 2217. And it also has a spot where you can actually input when you uncork that. And that's cool. We're going to do that. Yeah. Hold. Okay, good. So we're going to do that. And that'll help uh, kind of track the, uh, the aging process of the, uh, of the bourbon. Now, um, looking at this right off the top, it looks very light. Uh, it doesn't look as dark and as, as robust as, as a traditional bourbon would be. So I'm, uh, I, I'm anticipating a lighter, more delicate bourbon. We'll see if that plays out. But all in all, I do, uh, I do like the, uh, the, the presentation. It is an 86.6 proof. So I'd say it's a, a moderately proofed alcohol. Um, they've definitely diluted it. It's not, uh, not barrel strength, uh, that's for sure. Okay, let's give this a shot. I love the, uh, I love the wooden topped cork. And it does look like it is a natural, uh, natural cork opposed to a synthetic. So let's see what we have here, kids. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. That's uh, that's unique. Pour a nice, healthy dram of that. You know I'm gonna do it. some more time 
All right, so guys, I think this green scotcher, uh, maybe even an amber rum or an Irish whiskey for sure. It's very light looking. The nose is very delicate. Uh, I was right by the by the looks. I did judge the book by the cover, and it seems to have played itself out uh, as such. Fruity, um, a little hoppy. Really, really not much oak. You see, you think bourbon, you think oak, dark wood, leather, smoke. I'm not getting that. Maybe dates or raisins in there. I'm almost getting like a like a barley, like a barley flavor. Without further ado, huh. apologize. About, <clears throat> apologize about the look of confusion. My taste buds are a little confused. Let me go after this one again. Spicy. Not hot. Black pepper, cayenne notes. But also a very soft, sweet throat feel. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's different. It is, it is not your, uh, your father's bourbon. That's, that's, uh, certainly uh, not the case. Now that sip, I don't know. So again, you know how sometimes I tell you guys, Oftentimes, just letting these things breathe do wonders for the, the spirit. I think almost in that uh, that minute or so that we've had this open, it seems like that's helped it already. Um, yeah, it's a soft, delicate, but at the same time, peppery, um, sweet, buttery, um, dark fruity. I am getting the port, uh, port wine flavor uh, in there. A trend in bourbon and whiskeys tends to be, okay, we're going to try to store our spirit in X, you know, name your spirit or name your wine or name your beer barrel and see what kind of flavors that imparts. And that's cool. And I'm glad the producers are experimenting with that. But sometimes I feel like it's maybe a bit exaggerated or a bit of a marketing uh, scheme. Um, but uh, I think it comes through here. I'm not sure if it's a good or a bad thing. Um... I would say it's unique. Um, I'm torn. Um, be, because I'm not immediately jumping from my chair and saying, this is the uh, the greatest thing since sliced bread, I'm going to be conservative with it. I'm going to probably give it a 6.5. I was going to go 7, but I'm going to give it a 6.5. I need to be a little more conservative with my scores. And Sam, I hope this isn't offensive for you. I have had this before, but it had been a while. So I felt like it was uh, appropriate to review again. And this is actually the first bottle that I've owned. So uh, this is the first time I've tasted it here in the in the bar. So, um, oh, that's it. Uh, quick shout out though. Um, I wanted to say uh, hello and thank you very much to Tom at Cleveland Whiskey for the behind the scenes tour of the uh, facility about uh, two weeks back. I, I look very forward and anticipate your uh, 2000, I guess, 14 uh, Cleveland Whiskey review uh, or I'm sorry release the uh, the Cleveland Christmas is a very very nice seasonal um, batch that they do and the new batch should be hitting our stores here locally and then I think they're in nine or ten states now so keep an eye out for that they do a really nice job 
And uh, I don't ever review the same spirit twice, but I am going to do that for them because I feel like that's the least I can do for the uh, the hospitality that was shown to me. So, uh, guys, thank you, as always, for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, we will be uh, we'll be delving into uh, bourbon season here, hopefully with uh, relative um, uh, regularity. Uh, again, assuming that the, uh, the new baby isn't too much of a headache, which I think it is. Anyways, thanks, guys. As always, and until next time, glasses up.